distinguish themselves from, you know, actually existing Islam, which is cruel and despotic in many of its national manifestations, and the separate idea of the true faith, which is, you know, religion of peace and love. And, and I wondered what you thought about that. Well, I was one of those on the left who spent a lot of time with the, with the left opposition in Eastern Europe, people who did take a form of that critique, mm -hmm. who, who, were, who were not in favor of NATO or capitalism. People like, I suppose in Poland, Adam Michnik would have been one. Mm -hmm. Not Havel, but some of the Czech opposition were, were democratic socialists of one kind or another. Yeah, and in Yugoslavia too, and in Bosnia particularly. So, and I still have some sympathy for that, that critique. The thing about that is it's, it's a bit more testable objectively. I mean, if you come to the conclusion, actually there is something wrong with the pricing policy of a socialist economy, it has, of all things, real difficulty working out what the value of things ought to be. And this probably isn't um, a result of it being hijacked. It, it may be a fault ab initio. There's, you don't think you're going to go to hell for saying that. Say, or well, you don't have, you don't bring upon yourself quite the same condemnation. Mm -hmm. The thing about um, theocracy is that it, it tends to say that um, if, if anything goes wrong, if the system breaks down, it, it is only because we haven't tried it hard enough. Yeah. Thus, for example, I, I go on about this all the time. We should be thinking about our Iranian brothers and sisters every day, not just the struggle they're having to bring about a democracy. And the fact that the Revolutionary Guards who've taken over their country are also the people who control the nuclear weapons. But that on top of that, Iran is booked to have a terrible seismic catastrophe. It's coming like a heart attack to Tehran. And no, no one's doing anything to earthquake, earthquake proof the country at all. Nothing. Nothing like what the Chileans have done even. It's more like Haiti. And at Friday prayers, I, I knew this would happen. Friday prayers, a couple, I've been writing about it for weeks. But Friday prayers the week before last, the guy did discuss possibility of the earthquake coming, being quite bad news, which, by the way, it will be if there are underground nuclear facilities that no one knows about. And he said, well, of course there'll be an earthquake because women insist on uncovering their faces. Yes, the promiscuity of women. This was the official sermon of Friday. Yes. The sexuality of women yes. was the cause of the earthquake. Yes. Now, both of, us, both of us have suffered from it's the seismic. Fault. <laughs> both of us have suffered from the seismic effects of the female sex. Speak for yourself. And we know it can't be. <laughs> we know it can't be underestimated. It's a. It can move mountains, all right. But <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> but they know they have to have an explanation. And um, well, I, d I don't think even Stalinoid Marxism ever quite no, no. crapped it's out. A, it's to a that new low. Degree, yeah. It's a new low. That's right. Look, before I want to open it up to the audience, but just before we do, I want to ask you one question on a different subject. Mm. which is something like the subject that, that Sherman Alexei might have been addressing, which is to do with the future of, of journalism uh, in, this, in the new age we find ourselves. And clearly, you've said most of your life as a working journalist, and we live in a moment when the environment is being transformed. And yes. I, I, I had dinner about a year ago um, in, in Washington, and I was seated next to the publisher of the Washington Post, Catherine Weymouth, and I asked her, because there were many stories about the Washington Post being in, in, in difficulties. Now, the worry, of course, for many of us is that the Internet has not yet shown itself to be capable of supporting a news-gathering investigative uh, project of the kind that great newspapers have supported. Yes. So if the print media die and the Internet fails immediately to replace them, what are the prospects, if you like, for the truth? Yes, well, one reason why I nearly couldn't make your kind invitation this evening was that last night we had to give uh, the party at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, the annual thing where the press fawns too much on the president and the president fawns slightly too much on the press. And there we all were in the Washington Hilton Ballroom. And I thought, you know, it, it, it looks thinner every year somehow. Um, and I could add to what, I, and Catherine was there. She came to our, right after that, I, I was thinking, the Washington Times, which is the only rival to the Washington Post in Washington now, and which is a paper owned by the Reverend Sung Myung Moon of the Unification Church at that, is very nearly dead. And we'll be a one newspaper town pretty soon. I think last year, um, Seattle became a one newspaper town. I was astounded by that. 
to say. St. Louis, I think. Three or four. Los Angeles has been one for a bit, and the LA Times has gone down faster and further than anyone would have believed. Um, well, everyone knows a bit of this story, I suppose, but the, it's the speed of it that impresses me. And that's at the production end, if you like. At the demand end, I teach writing, and I've, I sometimes teach journalism. And of my students, I would say that none now regularly take a newspaper. And that's, that's more or less it. Uh, the demographic, as we say, that's, that's a death sentence. If, if the habit of picking up a paper and carrying it around with you or taking it into the house in the morning is gone among the young, then you've more or less set the clock. But what are the consequences of that? Well, they're, 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 so I used to think, well, the positive thing is that now if I have a bright young student whose work is promising, I don't, I can't, just, I don't have to limit myself to saying to them, look, I can probably introduce you to someone in the newsroom in Chicago or New York, wherever it might be. Uh, probably get your, your clips read. You might be able to bypass having to join the newspaper guild or a union or anything like this. So you might get a break. I, I can say to them, look, you could, you could put up your own site. You could publish. If you're doomed to write, you're doomed to write. And you could say, okay, okay I'll, I'll put it up there and see if anyone wants to come. Expose yourself directly to sort of thing. And that's been quite encouraging. And I know some people who've done rather well out of it. But here's what I think is the danger. It's partly the one you identify. It opens us to a, a, an era of so terrible relativism where everyone's opinion is as good as anyone else's. You don't have to earn, a, earn any credibility in a way. Um, and pretty soon you'd have not just your own opinions but your own choice of facts. And there wouldn't be a common stock of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, by the way, also a problem in teaching literature these days. Very difficult to find a book that everyone has read. But do you, think, um, do you think that the things like the iPad and the Kindle are ways for newspapers to survive? Yes, I, I mean, I think they're the only way they can survive. But it's, it, won't postpone, it won't postpone... I don't think people who weren't buying the New York Times weren't buying it because they couldn't get it on Kindle or will, or will now read it because they can get it that way. And there's actually an easy proof of that, I think. I was in... Um, I hate taxi TV, don't you? Yes. Um, but one particularly abject thing that happened to me the other day in New York was it was a New York Times ad clearly pitched to the youth market in that fawning way that older marketers talk to young people or the people they imagine to be young and say, just get the weekend edition. You don't have to sweat through all the news and yeah. uh, news and it's, it's all about sports and games and music and theater yeah. and the movies. You love it. Yeah. And the Washington Times, excuse me, the Washington Catherine's advertising in, on the radio in Washington is exactly the same. Just take it for a couple of days a week and read the fun stuff. Yeah. Don't think of us as a fuddy-duddy news gathering. We're not going to bore you with lots of stories about you know, Afghanistan or crap yeah. like that. Downers. Everything is entertainment. Yeah. So the defeat has already been experienced, yeah. if you like. Right. It's a shame. I was telling someone before, but has anyone seen the paper with Michael Keaton? Phil. Great. And some reason to me? Great. Great. A great movie, I think about a day in the life of a hack tabloid journalist in New York. He's obviously working for the Post. But the three papers are on his table in the morning, and his paper headline says, you know, headless body in topless bar, and the Daily News says something like, you know, Ford to New York drop dead, and um, the New York Times says uh, signs of swing to moderation in Nepalese elections. And he throws the paper to the floor and says, these bastards do anything to sell newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. that, that's over, believe me. Well, on that point, let's, we have about 15 minutes or so. So if people have questions they'd like to ask Christopher, there's two microphones there and there. And if you could... Or you, sir. Um, well, or me, but really him. <laughs> uh, if you could go to the microphones and, and take it in turn. Yeah, that's good. I love free speech, but I'm worried about Fox News. Their influence, they have so many viewers and they lie so much. Is Jon Stewart enough, you know, and Colbert? How do we deal with them? It's, 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 it, they just make all the noise in the world. Yeah, I sometimes feel that I'm not as judgmental about Fox as I might be, but it's because I was brought up in, for a lot, large part of the early part of my life, in, in London, where there's no pretense of objectivity in journalism. <laughs> Where you, 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 know, you know what you're getting. You, you look at the newsstands and they're ablaze with different papers. 
that are party oriented that are 